The Lord be with you. And also with you. This is Monday Thursday. It's a good day to start with just a little bit of silence. And this is just the very beginning of our Holy Week uh, services. We have Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and then ultimately Easter. So we have um, a service that begins today and doesn't end until Sunday morning. So we're, there is no benediction at the end of this service. We simply ask you to leave in silence. For those who come back tomorrow, um, we don't have an introductory song or a closing song. It's, it's all part of the whole thing. So, um, But welcome and thank you for joining us. Follow along in your bulletin. There are places where you are encouraged to sing along and to respond with the song with the two cantors. Thank you so much to um, Tim and Dot, who are our cantors this evening. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. And now we have a time of silence and reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. Renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And then you can just sort of just wave it at each other, or make a sign of peace in some way of offering that. Um, you're welcome to stand if you'd like for our gathering song, Where Charity and Love Prevail, which will be sung by our cantors. Dot and Tim. Glory that we see 
responsibly by whole verse. Tonight's reading is from John chapter 19, verses 23 through 30. Even on the cross, Jesus was concerned about the unity and well-being of those who loved before he completed his earthly mission. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. 
Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all now was finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, O Christ.
There is no place in John's gospel where Jesus says, this is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. This Monday, Thursday evening, we are instead seeing Jesus on the cross as he literally gives his body and literally sheds his blood, not just in words, but in action. His body is broken. His blood is shed. And it just, it looks like the end. According to the timeline in John's Gospel, Jesus was put on the cross the same day as when the lambs were being slaughtered in Jerusalem in preparation for the Passover. This is a day earlier than other Gospel writers, and it actually coincides this year with Passover, which begins tomorrow evening. So today would be the day of preparation. Why did John have a different timeline than all of the other gospel writers? Matthew, Mark, and Luke weren't good enough? What was John trying to say? Jesus is on the cross the same day the lambs are being slaughtered. Let's think back to the very beginning of John's gospel where the baptizer pointed out Jesus and said, Behold, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Think about that. Jesus, the Lamb, bleeding on the cross on the same day thousands of other sacrificial lambs were being slaughtered for Passover. There on the cross was God's sacrifice, God's Lamb, who was dying to take away the sin of the world. In our reading for today, we've heard three times when Jesus speaks. Once when he united his mother with the beloved disciple. Once when Jesus said he was thirsty. And finally when Jesus said, it is finished. With his last breaths, Jesus shared things that were important to him in John's Gospel. Meaning relationship, satisfying thirst, and fulfillment of God's plan. The first time he spoke, Jesus wanted to be sure his mom was going to be okay, even though he was leaving. And he wanted to be sure that the beloved disciple was part of his family. Jesus' mother in John's Gospel only shows up two times. At the wedding in Cana, the very beginning of his ministry, and here at the very, very end. Book ending. Jesus' work on earth. In that respect, we can see that John is telling us that relations, family, relationships between brothers and sisters, parents and children, children of the Heavenly Father, family is important, even if it's not biological family. We see this all the time where people maybe don't have a blood relative, and so they find someone else to be a sister or mother or daughter. Family is important, and Jesus has this amazing way of helping us to create family so that we can all take care of each other here in Baltimore or in Ukraine or in Afghanistan or Haiti or the Holy Land. We have brothers and sisters in Myanmar, Ethiopia, and Syria. Jesus wants us to be family taking care of each other. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Jesus also said, I'm thirsty. Thirst pops up again and again in the Bible. In John's Gospel, we might think of People being thirsty at that wedding in Cana when the water was turned into wine so that the wedding celebration could continue. And maybe we also think of Jesus asking for a drink of water from the Samaritan woman who was at the well. And Jesus ended up showing her that he could offer her living water, something even better. Ultimately, whenever we hear those words, I'm thirsty, it sounds very relatable. It sounds like a human condition. We have needs. We need water. We need food. We need shelter. And Jesus had to become human just like us. Jesus needed hydration just like we do. Jesus had needs and felt lack, like the way we feel when we don't have what we need. So the statement about thirst reminds us that Jesus became one of us 
and had thirst, but it also reminds us that Jesus could quench thirst and fulfill needs that no one else could. And the last words that Jesus spoke from the cross, according to John's Gospel, simply, it is finished. The earthly reason for Jesus' coming was fulfilled. His days of teaching in the synagogues and instructing the disciples, those days were over. He was finished with, with the flesh and blood work of healing flesh and blood people. It was finished. Jesus was on the cross. It, it looks like the end. But that doesn't mean the story really ends here. Jesus said he has the power to lay down his life and the power to take it up again. At this point, Act 1 is over. Kind of at an intermission, waiting in hopeful anticipation for the rest of the story. In the meantime, let us spend these days before Easter reflecting about the relationships that our Lord wanted us to have and how we need to treasure each other. And we can reflect on the ways that we have thirsts that can only be satisfied by God. And we wait to hear God's second act and find out how that Lamb of God actually takes away the sin of the world. It looks like the end. But it is not the end. Stay tuned. There is more to come. Amen. Other things we can reflect on are the questions that are in the bulletin. How can you honor Christ's call to care for each other as family? And tonight the altar space will be stripped away. What can you do to declutter your life? Let's now confess together the words of the John-based creed found on page 8 in your bulletin. We believe in God the Father who created all things and loves the world so much that God's recreative, reconciling work never ends. We believe in Jesus Christ our Lord, Word of God, Word with God, Word made flesh, who dwells among us. In his life he revealed who the Father is, for he and the Father are one. In his death, he revealed the great love of God. He is the living water, the bread of life, the good shepherd, the way, the truth, and the life, who has come to bring life abundant. He is the resurrection and the life, who has prepared a place for us in the Father's house, and will come again to take us with him. We believe in the Holy Spirit, Breathing on us by Jesus, who is our advocate, comforter, and friend. The Spirit reminds us of what Jesus taught us and continues to teach us the will of the Father. The Spirit gathers us into one holy universal church and the communion of saints, opens our hearts to receive the forgiveness of sins, and fills us with the life abundant and sends us forth to bring that same life to others. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be resurrected in body, mind, and spirit to live with Christ in the Father's house forever. Amen. As you are inclined to do so, we are encouraging you to stand up and stand around the perimeter, the outside edges of the sanctuary as we offer our petitions, our prayers. After each petition, you will hear, Lord, in your mercy, and your response is, hear our prayer. In these holiest of days, we offer prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. We pray for the church around the world, 
Write your new commandment of love on the heart of every believer and strengthen pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in humble service for your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the good earth you have made. Protect fields, orchards, local farms, and gardens. Inspire us with the new life budding around us that we show more care for plants and all living creatures. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for leaders in every land. Kindle compassion and equity in all who are called to administer justice. Guide all in positions of power away from the temptations of abuse and toward work for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in need, especially those who are incarcerated or unjustly accused. Illuminate paths to end oppression and form supportive communities gathered around a common commitment to justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this congregation and all who gather to receive your body and blood this night. Fill us at this shared table and nourish us well, to heed your example of grace. Send us in love to those who cannot be with us due to illness, and those who are in need of prayer, including Jack, Carol, Glenn, Helen, the Carl family, Andy, Doris, David, the Stahl family, Bill, Frankie, Barbara, Keith, Susan, Bill, Danielle, Jay, and family, Adelbert, Y.E., Jessica, Rob, Mary, Marcia, Frank, Elijah, Sarah, Cisco, Rachel, Ashley, John, Norma, Tina, Ray, Ron, William, Walter, Michelle, Rich, and those we remember silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the taming of the COVID pandemic, for equality and dignity among all people to prevail, for your holy comfort in Myanmar, Belarus, Ethiopia, Israel, Palestine, the Church in the Holy Land, Afghanistan, Haiti, and especially Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Baltimore and our online mission field, for our leaders, Joe, Larry, and Brandon, and our bishops, Elizabeth and Bill, for those who seek healing through the 12-step programs usually offered in our coffee house. For our prayer partner, First Lutheran Church in you in Michigan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those who have died in the faith. Teach us by their example and comfort us as we mourn. Renew us by the promise of life together with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. Amen. You're welcome to return to your seat. So we are not passing a plate during this pandemic still, and um, there are places and ways that you can make your offerings. There is a box in the back on the registration table. There's also information about texting or going online or mailing, and so all of that is there. And we continue with our offering prayer. Let us pray. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Um, we're just about to start the part of communion. I just wanted to remind you we have um, cups that are already filled up with the wine in the middle and the grape juice on the ends. If you don't feel comfortable coming up, uh, we understand we're still in the pandemic. There are in the back little kits, and you're welcome to go back and get one of those kits, and you can take the whole communion right where you're seated. Um, if you needed a gluten-free wafer, those are also on the back table, so that is possible as well. 
If you do need a gluten-free waiver for those who come forward, make sure you let your server know. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of the bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And now we pray together the Lord's Prayer. The words are printed on page 11. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Christ invites us to this holy feast and all are welcome. You don't have to be a member of this congregation. You don't have to be a Lutheran. The gifts of God are free. Here is food and drink for the journey. Take and be filled. And now I invite you to come forward and to, uh, you will take an empty, or sorry, a filled cup from the tray and come up to the kneeler or if you prefer one of those pre-filled kits from the back. Thank you. 
Christ given for you. Let us pray together. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. I ask you to remain seated as the altar is stripped and we hear Psalm 22. Saving me so far from the words of my groaning. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted and you rescued them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and not human, scorned by all despised by God. All who see me laugh to scorn. They curl their lips, they shake their heads. Trust in the Lord, let the Lord deliver. Let God rescue him, if God so delights in him. Yet you are the one who drew me forth from the womb, and kept me safe on my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many young bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround. They open wide their jaws at me, like a slashing and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, all my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of death. Packs of dogs close me in, a band of evildoers circles round me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones while they stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among them, for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far away. O oh, my help, hasten to my aid. Deliver me from the sword, my life from the power of the dark. Save me from the lion's mouth, 
From the horns of wild bulls you have rescued me. I will declare your name to my people. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all of you, spring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise or abhor the poor in their poverty, neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people, yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. 